more now of our conversation with Marilyn Hewson. She is the first woman to run the world's largest defense contractor, Lockheed Martin. As CEO, she manages 116,000 employees around the world, along with the largest weapons program in U.S. history, the F-35 fighter jet. We spoke with Houston yesterday at Fortune Magazine's Most Powerful Women's Summit in Washington. I was a senior industrial engineer. I never really said I want to be the CEO of Lockheed Martin, but I must say, you know, to be in this role is quite an honor. It's also quite a responsibility. When Marilyn Houston took over at Lockheed Martin in January, she became the most powerful person at the largest defense company in the world. She also became its first female CEO. How was that transition? The transition's been great. I've been with the company for 30 years, so I stepped into the role in January, and I frankly am very humbled to serve in a role like this for what I consider a national asset. The defense industry, though, has been known as the ultimate boys club, and now a woman is in charge of the biggest defense contractor. What do you think about that? Well, first off, I, I don't consider it an ultimate boys club. If you were just to look at Lockheed Martin, you'd see a lot of women in senior roles in our company. And not only that, our customers. So I, I don't consider it an old boys club. But it has changed over the three decades that you've been working there. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So? As a, well, as a, a young leader in the business, there were oftentimes I was the only female in the room with other leaders. And today, I'm happy to say that's not the case. Hewson says one of the keys to her success at Lockheed Martin was never turning down a promotion, even though it meant moving her family eight times over the course of her career. What's the leadership lesson, do you think, about your career path? I think the leadership lesson is to perform on today's job, but when an opportunity comes along, if it makes sense for you to take it, don't hold yourself back. Just as my mother said, you can do anything if you put your mind to it, you work hard and you take that responsibility. And I think that that would be my message. You've talked about your mother, that you learned a lot about leadership from your mother. How so? You know, my mother is 94 years old and still going strong. She never met a challenge that she couldn't address. She's always been very strong and frankly wanted to make sure her children were prepared for anything that came their way. Very resilient and very strong. Your dad died when you were nine years old and your mom had five kids to raise. How did she do it? She's robust and she's resilient and she did a superb job. But she did it because she was determined like many women of her era. And many women during that time in that generation faced a lot of challenges with their, with their husbands were off to war or there was challenges in the environment that they had and they learned to do what they needed to do and that's what she taught me. And I read that you were in charge of the groceries and that your mom would give you a $5 bill for $7 worth of groceries and say what? That's right. She'd say, make it, fit. I know you can make it work. Here's the list. And yeah, that was a challenge. That, that teaches you very quickly, you know, how to look for the best, best buy in the grocery store so that you can get everything for the family within that, that value. These days, Houston is in charge of slightly more money. Lockheed Martin is a $47 billion company. She's also ranked number four on Fortune Magazine's list of most powerful women. But she will always credit her success at the office to those lessons learned at home. She wanted us to be self-reliant. She wanted us to be able to do what we needed to do. And I bring that into the business world in a similar fashion. I think it's important for people to be prepared. We prepare our leaders for the next job by giving them experiences, giving them, uh, giving them the education and, and things so that when they are faced with a new challenge, they've had a collection of experiences to draw on so that they can be successful. Nice conversation. Go ahead. But a nice conversation. Sounds like a woman who has very much a, a sense of, of comfortable with herself mm -hmm. and, and the role she has. Well, anybody in big big business, certainly Washington, knows that the defense industry carries a lot of weight. It carries a lot of weight in Washington. Uh, so when you know the shutdown happened, the sequester, there's someone when calls Chuck Hagel yeah. and, it, and it's Marilyn Houston or the head of a defense firm. They pick up the phone. He gets on the phone. Yeah, because they have 80 percent of Lockheed Martin is government contracts. Um, a lot of government contractors are at these big firms. And they have the biggest, uh, you know, weapons defense programs in the world. So you can see she's very level-headed. She's very smooth, sort of, and she doesn't do, this is her first interview that she's done. I mean, it's very and difficult did, to get. She did very well. Now I want to meet her mom, though. I, Imagine a role model. Her mom never went away from a challenge. Clearly, she's passed it on to her daughter. And I like her advice, Nora, never turn down a promotion. So many women say this is not, you'd be surprised at how many people say it's not a good time for me in my life, what's going on. I like that, never turn down well, a promotion. Well, she's yeah. really surprised to be selected CEO? 
you know, I think she'd worked her way up. She'd been there for, for 30 years. It was a difficult transition. The former CEO had left kind of under a, a cloud of, of scandal. Um, but she's been at that company and knows every little piece of it. So, and the other interesting thing about Lockheed Martin is given the defense cuts, that now that a lot of the business is going to come from overseas, yeah. of course, Asia Pacific, yeah. China, they want our defense equipment, missile defense systems, et cetera. Right.